Hey fellow SweetScript developers, Eric from Stoic Software here again today. And in this video, we will be investigating how to add buttons to our custom Sweetlet forms. Uh, but before we get into that, if you would like to become a competent and confident SweetScript developer yourself, uh, get started now with my free email course on the best resources for learning SweetScript. You can find a link down at the top of the description. All right, let's get started. Recall that one of the primary uses of a sweetlet in NetSuite is to create a custom page that our users can navigate to and interact with. And oftentimes we also want to add uh, custom buttons to those sweetlet forms uh, to give our users additional actions to perform. Um, we'll use an example sweetlet from a previous video as our starting point. So here is our starting sweetlet. Um, it renders a it essentially renders a list of search results. So we have a function that goes out and gets the search results, one or two rather, that translate the results to an object that the list can understand. Then we draw the list of search results. And here is what our sweetlet looks like in practice right now. So we have a list of our uh, high priority cases. And what we want to do is add a button to the form that takes the user to the next case that they should work on. So there's going to be a couple moving pieces for that. Uh, the first thing we need to do is just add a button to our list here, to uh, our form. The second thing we'll need to do is add uh, some logic behind that button so once the user clicks it, it actually performs some kind of action. The sweetlet is rendering the form, uh, adding the button, and all of that stuff on the server side. But the user is going to be clicking the button on the client side. And as you may or may not know, we add client-side logic using a client script. So we are, in addition to adding our button to the form, we're also going to need to create a client script that uh, contains the button click logic. And then we need some way to associate that client script to our sweetlet. So those are the pieces that we will be tackling here today. As always, before we get started, we want to make sure that our repository is up to date and that uh, we isolate our feature work into its own branch in our repository. So here we are on the master branch. We want to make sure that everything is up to date. Okay, we're already up to date. So now we need to add a new branch for the work we're about to do. All right, so here we have a clean new branch ready for our feature work. Here is our sweetlet script. So the first step will be just to add the button to the form. So let's look at the help to figure out how we add a button to our list. So recall that our list is a member of the server widget module. Let's go look at what's on the list. Right away, up at the top, there's an add button function. So how do we use that? We need to give it an ID and a label, and then optionally, we can specify a function name, uh, which will be the logic that gets called when the button's clicked. Uh, we'll start out just by adding the ID and the label, just to get the button showing up on the form. Back in our sweetlet, we use the add button function on our list object. We look at the help docs here. 
there's this caveat that the ID of the button must start with cust page, which is why I've included that here. So at this point, we should have a button with a label that shows up on our form. And we refresh the page. There's our button. That doesn't do anything yet. We haven't attached any logic to it. That will be our next step. Okay, as I said before, since the sweetlet is running server side, but the user is clicking the button on the client side, we can't put the button click logic directly in our sweetlet. We need to separate it out into a client script. Um, and for that, so for that we will need a new file. Now technically, what we're adding doesn't need to be a client script. Uh, it just needs to be an empty file that is accessible uh, in the file cabinet. So we're just going to add an empty module rather than a client script module. So we give it about the same name, except we'll append a CL just to indicate that this is the client script for the same uh, feature. All right, so we just fill out our template there. Now, to get started, let's just show an alert uh, on the client script or when the button is clicked, just so we know that everything is working correctly. So I'm going to add a function to my module that shows an alert. Okay, remember that the functionality we're ultimately building here is to take the user to the next appropriate case. So we call our function go to next case. And here's where we want to tell the button which function to call um, when it's clicked. So we just pass in the name of our function to the function name property of the add button call. So we have our client script. We have the function, the business logic, essentially for the button click, but we haven't yet tied our client script to our sweetlet. So how do we do that? Let's go back to the help for the list. Look at our object members. There are two properties here that help us connect client scripts to our sweetlet list. One is called client script file ID, while the other is called client script module path. You only need one of these, and in fact, you'll get an error if you try to specify both. Uh, the first one, client script file ID, lets you specify a file to attach to the sweetlet uh, by its internal ID, its numeric internal ID. Um, I prefer not to use this one. This ID, uh, say you're bundling or you're working in multiple environments, this ID could change from environment to environment. So it's not the best, it's not the most resilient uh, method to use. Instead, I like to use the module path version, which lets us uh, specify the client script by uh, the path relative to the sweetlets script file. So before we can do that though, we need to upload our file to the file cabinet. So let's start there. And you can see I've cheated a little bit here. I've already uploaded it, but we will remove it and re-upload it just to, <laughs> just to show the example. So here's my project folder. This is the sweetlet already here. Let's go add our client script. There it is, select that. 
And that's really all we need to do. We don't actually need to make a script record. We don't need to deploy it in any way. We just need the source file itself available in the file cabinet. Now I've put them, the sweetlet and the client, its client script in the same directory. And so we can use the module path property um, relative to the current directory. So let's do that. So we have the client script module path is just a property on our list object. And we set it equal to a string that identifies the path of the client script we're attaching. The dot tells NetSuite to look, look in the same directory as the sweetlet file. So as this file right here. And then we give it the file name. Uh, if, if this was in a subdirectory, we could include that, for instance, but uh, it's not. So this is how we associate our client script module to our sweetlet module. All right, let's give this a shot. We update our sweetlet and refresh the page. I'm going to open the developer console and I click the button and we have an error. Go to next case is not a function. So what happened here? We go back and look at our client script. This function that we've made is what we call a private, what you might call a private function. Uh, it is only visible inside this module. Uh, we have not made it available externally, if you will, um, or it's actually it would actually typically be called public. We have not made go to next case a public method for our module. So what we need to do is export go to next case as a public method. And we do that by attaching it to uh, the output object of, the, of our module. Just like that. So we give it uh, a property name that we want it to be referenced by, which is just, in this case, the same as the function name. So if you see an error like this in your browser console, uh, go to next case is not a function or is undefined or, or something like that, um, that's probably what happened. You forgot to export your click handler method in this manner. So if we upload update our client script, there's our export. Refresh. And now there is our alert when we click the button. Okay, that is great, but that alert is not very useful. So let's actually implement our redirection logic here. To get started, uh, let's say not let's say, I have a save search right here that we use to prioritize the cases. And so they're sorted in the correct order. Uh, the, so the, the case at the top of the search results should be the next one that I work on. So we're gonna use that save search to drive uh, which case we uh, redirect our user to. Right, so we need this uh, internal ID so that we can load this save search. So that's the first thing we need to do. We need the search module in order to load a save search. So we load the search. We don't need to change it at all. It's already set up correctly in the UI. So our script doesn't need to do anything special. We just need to run the search. 
we only care about the first result. We only care about the next, the highest priority case, and that is the first result. So we only need to get a range of one. Now that comes back as an array. So all we need is the first element of that array. And all we care about from there is the ID of the case. And so search results just have a simple ID property that we can use. And so that, that should be the output of our function. And just add some console logging to uh, inform us where, where our script is, how it's performing. Okay, so we have our search, we've loaded our search, we have retrieved uh, the ID of the next case. Now we need to, before we can redirect to that case, we need its URL. And we can do that with the URL module. So we import that and let's go look at its help docs. Right. There's several methods in here, but the one we are we want the we want the URL of a record. So we want the resolve record function. And to use this, we have three required parameters: the type of record we're redirecting to, the ID of the record, and whether or not to uh, redirect to edit mode or view mode. There's an optional parameters or params option, but uh, we won't be using that. You can use that to do things like pre-populate fields on the form, um, but we don't need to do that here. We're just worried about these three, record type, record ID, and is edit mode. So we will make a new function that will return the URL based on the provided case ID. Now, in order to get, to make sure we're using the correct record type identifier, I'm going to import the record module uh, to use its type enumeration. We'll import that as R. The ID of the case is just what's being passed into this function. And we do want to redirect the user to edit mode since the idea would be they're using this button to then go work on that case, so maybe they need to uh, add a message or uh, something like that. So we want them to go straight to edit mode. All right, so that generates our URL. Let's put these functions to use. Let's stop there and test this out. We haven't made any changes to our suitelet, only to our client script. Notice that we don't need to make, the two new functions we've added do not need to be uh, public. We don't need to export them. They are only for use inside of our module. Okay, we have updated our client script, refresh our suitelet. Click the button, here we can see our tracking. We can see the next case ID we got was 100, 148. Let's check that. Look at the search results of our saved search. And 100, 148 is at the top. So it looks like we're getting the right internal ID. And now here's the URL that gets generated. Note that it does not give us the domain. Uh, it only gives us the path after the domain. So it starts with, starts with slash app, um, just like this does up here, right after the netsuite.com. So how do we redirect to a new URL on the client side? Uh, it's different depending whether you're on the server side or the client side. On the client side, what we actually do, we use the global window objects 
uh, location property. So window.location is, is uh, the URL of the current page, and we can use that. We can manipulate it. It is, a, it, it is writable. Um, return a location object. And if we look at the properties on the location, the path name is going to be the one we're interested in. And so all we need to do to redirect when we're on the client side, when we only have this partial URL, if you will, the path name, we just need to set window.location.pathName to this result. So that's what we'll do. And after we click the button, our client script automatically switches us over to the case in edit mode. And we can see here's our ID, 100, 148. So we have just added a button to our suitelet form. Now that all of our code is working, we want to commit it first, make sure we save it, have a nice backup, a record of what we changed. So we have modified one file, and we're about to add a new one. So we first stage all of our changes. We commit them and push them out to the remote. Now normally we'd have probably some QA or some user testing here before we merged this up to master, but we're skipping that. <laughs> So we presume all of our QA and our user testing went wonderfully, and we want to merge our feature branch into uh, the production-ready code. Our merge is done. And we push out to everyone else. And that is it for this lesson. If you liked what you saw in this video, hit that thumbs up button. Go share what you learned with somebody else. Hit subscribe to stay tuned with uh, all my videos and become a competent, confident SweetScript developer yourself. Uh, thanks for watching. Keep learning. Keep sharing. And I will see you next time.